Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready to talk Ukraine? I am, but I have to tell you guys something. If anyone tells you this is a simple story, they are lying. A few days ago, no one was talking about Ukraine. Now everyone's talking about Ukraine and how a conversation between the American president and Ukrainian president has led to an official impeachment inquiry in Congress. So we're gonna connect the dots on this, but just know if your head is spinning, you're not alone. <laughs> you are not alone. And I think finally we have enough information to provide a really good foundation for you. So you have an idea about what's happening. So when you, when you see headlines cross, you're gonna know why they matter, okay? So let's just start off with some of the basics. I'm gonna take you back to 2013 because 2013 was a really important year in Ukraine. There was a lot of political unrest. You had those in Ukraine that wanted to pull the country closer to the West, closer to the EU, and you had those in Ukraine, a lot of those in power, who wanted to maintain close ties with Russia. And so these two sides clashed and there were deadly protests in the streets of Ukraine. In 2014, Russia marches into Crimea. Crimea was recognized by the international community as being part of Ukraine at the time, and basically says, no, Crimea is gonna be part of Russia. It was a way for Russia to assert its power in this part of the world and kind of show people that they were gonna have leverage no matter what. You might also recall in July of 2014, those working with or for Russia shot down a passenger plane that was flying over Ukraine full of innocent people and the world sort of watched in horror as this happened. I mean, this was an incredibly chaotic, violent time in this part of the world. And this was during the Obama administration. Vice President Joe Biden sort of takes the lead here in diplomatic efforts in Ukraine as we do wanna see Ukraine come closer allied with the EU and with the West rather than with Russia. Also in 2014, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, starts working for an energy company in Ukraine, an energy company that has closer ties to Russia or more closely aligned to Russia than to the West. And so this raises some eyebrows, quite frankly about a conflict of interest. You know, why is the vice president's son of all energy companies in the world working for this particular company? The Obama administration answers these questions as they come up and says, listen, he's a private citizen. He can work where he wants to work. But you should know that the questions about his employment at this particular company have surfaced over the last several years. He worked for this company until 2019, until recently. So in 2016, the vice president, Joe Biden, is talking about foreign aid to Ukraine. Again, we want to see Ukraine closer to the West, and we want to see a government that's more friendly to us. And as part of the contingencies of, of or the requirements of this foreign aid, Vice President Joe Biden wants to see a government prosecutor uh, removed or re resign. And again, this raises some questions because this particular prosecutor at one time investigated the company that Joe Biden's son worked for. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, again, something that just sort of raised some questions, especially for political opponents of Joe Biden. And we're gonna see that again. So hold that thought. Let's go to this summer, 2019. President Trump decides that he's going to withhold or freeze aid to Ukraine, sound familiar, right? <laughs> so that's a few days before a phone call that he has with Ukraine's new president. And in this phone call, he's talking about foreign aid, about American support for the country. Uh, it's a very pleasant phone call. You can read it for yourself. I encourage you to do it because I think we'll all have a little different impression of this particular phone call. But in this phone call, he does talk about this prosecutor resigning at the request of, of Joe Biden, it's that particular that particular prosecutor that he's, he's apparently mentioning, and he's mentioning the Bidens in general, and looking into their activities, okay, in Ukraine. And so this apparently raised some questions for a member of the Intel community that either was listening to this phone call or heard about this phone call and raised this concern higher up the chain of commands in the United States government to say, hey, I don't think this was appropriate. I'm just flagging this for you. And the reason why there could be concerns is that according to US election law, no American citizen can solicit help from uh, a foreign national, whether it's a contribution of any kind when it comes to an election. 
And so the question that has surfaced is whether or not the president of the United States was asking a foreign national habit to be the president of Ukraine for help, a contribution of some sort to the election because now Vice President Joe Biden is a political opponent of President Trump. So did President Trump ask Ukraine's new president for help investigating the Biden so that he would have some leverage going into the 2020 elections? That's one of the questions that's raised. The second question that's raised is whether or not the president, President Trump, was withholding foreign aid as sort of a quid pro quo, quo meaning I'm not going to give you any money or supplies if you don't do this for me. That's another question that was raised. So this, uh, this is, again, according to an anonymous whistleblower in government that raised these concerns. When Democrats found out about these concerns, this is where the official impeachment inquiry comes from because you have Democrats saying this president is abusing his power and that's an impeachable offense. An impeachable offense, by the way, is a very broad definition. Uh, it can include a lot of different things. And so this is where Democrats are right now saying we, we're announcing a specific inquiry into this particular scenario, this particular phone call between the president and the president of Ukraine and whether or not our American president acted uh, badly or even illegally. And that's what Congress is looking into. Now, a couple of things that you should know. As of September 25th, 2019, we have no idea where this is going to go. So even though the inquiry is open, we have no idea if there's going to be an impeachment vote. And in fact, even if there was a vote, even though Democrats have the majority in Congress and the House of Representatives, we don't know if the president would be officially impeached. You would think that would be the scenario, but you, you don't know for sure. So that's something you should know. We also have no idea what form this inquiry is going to take. Are there going to be hearings? What's going to happen next? We, we really have no idea. It's all TBD. But one thing you should know historically about impeachment is that the House of Representatives can vote to impeach a president but the Senate is the only body that can remove a president. So that's why President Bill Clinton, for example, was impeached by the House of Representatives, but he was not removed from office. In fact, no American president has ever been impeached and removed from office by Congress. So that's something you should know. I think at the end of the day, here's a question you should ask. Uh, I think that we should all ask ourselves. And it's a question that Democrats are asking and Republicans too. At the at the end of the day, these folks work for us, whether it's the American president or members of Congress, and they have to wonder, are they carrying out the will of the people? Is it the will of the American people to see an official inquiry, impeachment inquiry into the American president over this particular phone call, over this particular issue? And that's a very important question to, to ask going into an election year when um, both parties want to show that they're serving the will of the people. So I pose that question to you. Is this something that you'd like to see? What questions do you have about this particular topic? I'd love to hear from you. On social media, you can write some of those questions in the comment section, and we're going to answer them as they come up and as the story develops, because we want to make sure that we really stay on this for you and provide a great service for you. In the meantime, I'm really curious what you think about what you would like to see next and whether or not you think this particular phone call and this particular ask by President Trump uh, warrants the, the level of criticism that it's getting from uh, certain politicians. What do you think? Read the transcript. Let me know your thoughts and flip through our bullet points, uh, which I think are really clearly condensed into just the basics that you should know in this story. Uh, in the meantime, hopefully all of, all of us have stopped with the head spinning and the craziness and have a little bit more of a handle on this story. I know I have. So thanks for the opportunity because taking a deep breath and looking into this was really helpful to me too. All right, guys, have a great day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you right back here on Sabarian News.